Hey everyone, this is George from the Metalheads Podcast. I'm here with my friend Buke. Hey guys. And we are talking to a couple of the guys from Catapult the Dead. We've got Ben Heitman and Imad Dejani. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. All right. So you guys released your first album this year called All Is Sorrow. Why don't you guys start off by telling us a little bit about the band, when you guys started out, who does what in the band, stuff like that. Uh, well, I guess it all started uh, a couple years ago. Um, me, Ben, and Gary were you know, just writing some music, just like in our own home studios, and eventually tried out, started trying out drummers and got a band together and our whole idea for all is sorrow we were conceptualizing making like a soundtrack more of something to go along with the video and to make more of one long piece and that was like the whole basis and starting of the band was the whole idea was to make this one song and that was going to be the first album we dropped and i don't know that's how we went and decided to go about everything and eventually just found all the pieces and people to fill in the roles. Hey guys, be- before you had those roles filled in, in this uh, day of, you know, modern technology where we can, you know, use various you know, apps and uh, re- re- recording devices and stuff, were you guys each maybe on your own starting to put together little riffs or little uh, lyrics or anything down you know maybe on you know when you're by yourself before you got together and started putting this project down somewhat i mean mostly it started off as a studio-based project and we all live really close together and uh pretty much hanging out all the time anyway so we were just messing around in the studio and just kind of went from there you know spare time went into building the base for it and you guys are in San Francisco? Uh, right outside. We're in the East Bay, uh, Concord, actually. Okay. Most of us live. Most of us are Berkeley. We practice out in Oakland. We play most of our shows. Okay. I have to ask you guys, since George and I are here in D.C. area, are you guys giant fans? Uh, not huge <laughs> baseball fans, but I was definitely rooting for the Giants. Okay. Yeah, in Cincinnati, uh, I'm a I'm a Reds fan. So okay. Well, <laughs> for knocking out our Nationals, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what music were you guys listening to uh, that inspired you to write this kind of music? And just how would you classify Catapult the Dead's music? Not that you should like you know paint yourself into a corner saying you're this kind of metal or whatever, but you know just curious. I think when we started, we really didn't know. I mean, we, we knew we wanted to play slower metal, but I don't think it really went into too much depth of like what style we were trying to play. More just a feeling we were trying to get, I guess. It was definitely, I mean, we intentionally told our drummer in the beginning that there's no double bass allowed. It's going to be down <laughs> tempo. It's, we had a picture of what we were going to do, but as far as how it came out, or I don't think... I think it just kind of evolved for sure. It changed pretty drastically from when we started to what it turned out to be. And I think you can hear that just in the writing process because we wrote the album in order. So you listen to the beginning of it, that was when we were first starting to write and get things together versus the ending of the album was when we were really, you know, meshing well with each other. And I I just feel like the writing was a lot stronger towards the end of the album because we're really trying to hone in on our style. Had you guys been in bands before this, or is your first band coming together and playing this type of metal? Well, a lot of us had been in bands together playing different <laughs> genres. Yeah, that's how we met, actually, playing wow, in okay. a different, yeah. different and it's like a power metal band. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> actually, this is the first band I've ever played guitar, and I'm mainly a drummer. And that's how I met Ben, was drumming for this kind of like metal, power metal, epic band we were in just for fun. And actually, yeah. the first time I had, had met you, I was playing drums for another band that Imad used to play drums for. And as it turns out, those two didn't get along anymore. And uh, there was a shouting match over the phone, and I grabbed the phone and started yelling at Imad. And that was our first ever contact. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, as a power metal fan myself, you know, to. Two opposite worlds here. How how do you go from you know glorious epic 
you know, sometimes as it's called, you know, let's just call it like like we hear it, nerdy at times. How do you go from power metal to, uh, you know, this glorious doom metal that I'm hook, hooked on now? Well, I, I've been listening to a lot of Eddie Murphy lately, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Party all the time. That's a good song. I love that one. It's, that's been on repeat, man. <laughs> we all listen to everything. and I mean, I, I know for me, back in those days, I didn't really listen to slow metal at all. I didn't really have much of the attention span for it. And... You know, I was listening to more the melodic death metal, power metal, metal core, whatever. Uh, that's more what I was listening to. And I don't know, just I think Neurosis was one of the first bands that I really got into where it's like, this is different. This is a different kind of heavy. Yeah, and definitely. It's, it's kind of evolved my taste, and now it's like I listen to slow music. I don't listen to the fast metal anymore. You know, I want to. I want to hear these slow, chunky stoner riffs as opposed to technical sweeping and all of that. It's just I don't know. I think we all go through evolutions of what we listen to, but I think you can hear a little piece of all of the influence put together into it. Sounds good. So, the opening track and title track, "All Is Sorrow," thirty-seven minutes long. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this massive song and how that came about. Well. We, uh, the original idea was we wanted to do something that sounded more like a soundtrack than a song. It oh. was it was always intended to be one piece from the beginning. Actually and started out uh, with the intentions of doing a, a film to it, but uh, ended up just doing the short for Valencia and kind of dropped off there. But uh, yeah, that was the intention to, to keep it very like a horror-esque soundtrack. You know, uh, went through a lot of emotion and con- conveyed a lot of feeling. A lot of movements, a lot of time changes, key changes, and just trying to keep the attention there. But yes. little, little repetition and more, more like a journey and a story in, in music, I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, you guys have heard, um, you know, the f- famous uh, Dope Smoker by Sleep. You know, I mentioned that because you know another you know album that's you know one song that just goes on and on. As somebody who can't even write a thirty second song, uh, is it hard, guys, to start to try and say, hey, you know what, at the twenty six minute mark, we should work this in, or does this kind of flow? You know, I, I feel like it flowed more the longer we got into it. I feel like earlier on we probably hit a couple of brick roads and rewrote, restructured, but. A lot of the later stuff, and I think it's just that maybe we're all getting better at our instruments and better at what we were doing, but it seemed like the later stuff flowed way better, and in a sense, you know, the song starts to write itself. It's funny, because like the a couple of the newer tracks we've been working on are like right around 8 minutes and 10 minutes, and they just feel really short now. <laughs> like, yeah, we get done with the song, it's like, Wait, oh, that's done that already? was really fast. <laughs> It was only 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I first pulled up the album, I, I sort of double-taked. I was like, yeah, you know, this, there's like this song and this song. And I was like, wait a minute, does that say 37 minutes? <laughs> I, I, I thought like, you know, there was like, the file was corrupted or something was wrong. <laughs> I was like, I, that can't possibly be that long. But that's pretty awesome. So do uh, we now dare you guys to go over the hour mark for a, for a song now? Hmm. We were talking about it last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. How much of that, though, was drunken party and talk, though? Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who did that cool album artwork? Ah, that was uh, Coven Illustrations out of, uh, out of Spain. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's some cool work there. Nice. Really good. Really, really happy with uh, what he came up with and how it turned out. Excellent. So some of the vocals on the album are pretty wild. Uh, do you do anything to prep your voice so you don't blow it out when you're doing this? Uh, <laughs> lots of coffee, cigarettes, whiskey. All the old standbys. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you guys play shows, or is this just a studio thing? Uh, we, uh, we play shows. Uh, right now we're transitioning into a new drummer, so... We've been, uh, we haven't played in a few months now, but we're definitely going to be getting back to it at the beginning of the year. 
hopefully playing some new material because uh, most of our shows, have, well, all but one show has actually been us just playing this 37 minute long song. So now with the new drummer, we've got some new material coming. So just getting excited to get back out there and play the new stuff. You going to be doing any touring too, or just local like, shows? Uh, we'd like to do touring, but we all have full time jobs. Really tough with six people, and there's six yeah. of us, and trying to schedule <laughs> even one day a week to get a practice together is difficult. Let alone trying to schedule you know a week or two week long tour. But I mean, it's definitely something we want to do. We just gotta get the timing right. Yeah, we're hoping to at least hit the West Coast this following year. So for trying out new drummers, you know, most bands would say, hey, try and play this blast beat or try and do this, you know, roll or something like here. You guys are you guys just sim- simply say 37 minutes, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you can drum for 37 minutes, you've got the gig. <laughs> <laughs> you can not fall asleep and drool on yourself. That's <laughs> just kind of fell in our laps. And it, we, we actually met him at one of our shows and uh, he, bought a record was a fan prior so it's like he knew what he was getting into before uh yeah we just put like a little thing on facebook saying you know yeah our drummer just left and we're looking and just happened to hit us up on there yeah we had one <laughs> tryout with him and we were just like yeah we're foolish if we try anybody else out at this point and it was just I too good it out of the park perfect style so and i feel like we have the best fit for the band now that we've had yeah absolutely. cool so, what are each of you guys currently spinning on your iPod slash iPhone slash musical device of choice? Ooh, let's see. Um, really been digging the uh, new Funiary. Okay. Pretty good stuff. Uh, what did you find the other day? A band called Pharaoh. Okay, yeah, I've heard of them. I've been uh, really getting into Rosetta. And they just had a little EP drop. Yeah, I really like them. I've heard and, that too. Yeah, and uh, Bong Ripper. I've been listening to a lot of Bong Ripper. <laughs> saw a year of no light the other day from france man they, they blew it out of the water really really impressive show really stoked to see those guys okay well we're about to play a song from all is sorrow this first song is called valencia what can you tell us about this song before we play it well, this is uh the first single out of the entire song we released actually we released uh, just valencia and we filmed a little uh pretty much like a horror short kind of thing to go with it and um yeah it was like a, a first first little piece and i think it's one of the one of the first things that really i think was you and gary had and it was just like a little song that you guys yeah, yeah. worked on we brought it and i believe it was grow. probably in a different key different tempo but it was just like this idea of a song that we kind of brought into this so this was like this is some like real early stuff
We're here again with Catapult the Dead, with Ben Heitman and Imad Dajani. We're about to close out this episode with another song from their album, All Is Sorrow. This next song is called Servitude. What's the story with this song? Well, this one was kind of, uh, final, this song just wrote itself, really. The was, final piece of the puzzle. Uh, everything just started coming together at this point and pretty much jammed this song out and practice. And it, it, it just fell together. It was. And we always, we always kind of had the outro idea that we had for it. We wanted to have it really break down to just like a tribal thing where it was just drums and then come in with just some heavy guitar ripping and have it be this super layered thing that just builds and builds and builds until it just all suddenly drops. So we had a pretty good concept behind it before going in and writing it. I think that works as well. Really kind fun of, one live. Yeah, that's play drums. That's, yeah, Ben gets on the floor, Tom for the uh, second half of it. So it becomes this really percussive, really uh, moving piece. Definitely the most fun uh, piece of the song to play live. In my opinion, definitely the heaviest. So the album is available on Bandcamp, and I found it interesting at uh, that you guys noted there at the bottom that the album is intended to be listened to you know, all at once cons- consumed, you know, as one whole uh, piece, not, you know, bits and pieces here and there. Was that something you guys had to, you know, kind of consciously go into when we we're putting this album together? That, oh, this, yeah. that, that this is how we want to, it to be done? Because, you know, in this day and age, with most people listening to music, it's a track here, it's a track there. <laughs> that's short attention span. That's exactly why we release it as both, as <clears throat> having the one long piece but having that also come with the individual pieces. Because we understand that, you know, people might want to listen to us, but they might not want to listen to 37 minutes of us. I mean, they will skip through it themselves to have the pieces available individually, along with having the piece seem like the best possible for both worlds. Now, with with Bandcamp, guys, have, uh, you know, it's obviously exposed you guys around the world. Have you been... uh, you know, talking to fans and listeners throughout the world and, you know, getting any excitement or freight feed- feedback from, from them? Oh, yeah. We've been completely surprised by the amount of touch we've, we've gotten off of this. I mean, it's unreal to us to see, like, Valencia, we put it out on Bandcamp uh, two days later after we put it up free download on Bandcamp. It was on YouTube. It, it, it was bouncing around. and People actually we didn't push it at all. Like, they just found it on Bandcamp and and it took itself from there. And it's really cool to see how hard the fans out there are working to find the music and just digging. Yeah. And a lot of it's thanks to blogs like what you guys are doing, you know, keeping up with new bands and whatnot, just having social media and all these blogs that do this kind of thing it helps the bands and it helps the fans find bands. That's why we're doing it. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us today, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to everyone for listening. We'll see you next time. This is Catapult the Dead and Servitude.